Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Schrout. Today we're going to talk about the MSI GS30 Shadow. Now this is a laptop and docking station combination we first saw at CES in January this year. Uh, you can see we've got the laptop here, the docking station set up behind it. Now the premise of this device is really quite simple, but it's something that we've been looking to get perfected for many, many years. That would be the idea of a laptop that is both thin and light, as we have here. Uh, you can see we've got this light up stripe on it because we've got it asleep. But one that can also dock into a uh, larger machine and we have discrete graphics, uh, we have external you know, USB capability, but really the important part here is that this holds a discrete graphics card, which you can see the connections of here, to get optimal gaming performance out of it. So let's talk about these components individually first. Uh, up now we've got the GS30 itself laptop. This is a, uh, it's very thin. Uh, I think it's like three quarters of an inch thick, uh, only 2.6 pounds. So it is a very thin machine. It's not branded as an Ultrabook though because of some of its component specifications. For example, this laptop has a Core i7-4870HQ processor, which is a um, quad-core hyper-threaded part that has fairly high frequencies and it actually has Iris Pro graphics in it as well. It has a pair of 128 gig SSDs running in RAID 0. It has 16 gigs of memory. It's got very high specifications. Now what's unfortunate about that is that the 4870HQ processor actually has a TDP of 47 watts. And if you look at this, especially if you look at the side, we've got some ventilation here. Uh, if you look at uh, the bottom, you'll see there's quite a bit of ventilation area on the bottom. Um, this laptop will get loud. It actually gets considerably louder than any other kind of modern machine that I've used. Uh, and you don't really, you don't even really have to be gaming hard for that to be the case. So that's, that's the first drawback. If you look at it, um, the display on it, uh, which I don't think we can show because it has some artificial flickering that shows up on camera that doesn't really show up on screen because of PWM, but, um, it has a fairly nice screen, 1080p resolution on that. It runs Windows 8.1. Uh, we have a, a keyboard that has backlighting, one setting of backlighting. The trackpad is actually really nice. Uh, in terms of connectivity options, you get a full-size SD card slot, a USB 3, HDMI, uh, gigabit Ethernet on it as well. And then on the other side, you have USB 3.0 as well as audio connections. Now, the one connection on this that is the most important is on the back and it's going to be really hard to see actually but this kind of little opening here if i can squeeze my finger in there you get this you can see kind of like the the golden fingers of uh, the edge of a pcb and the secret is, is that's essentially a full-size pci express slide and what that's useful for is connecting it to this this is the msi gaming dock as they're calling it and it's essentially the size of a bread box. Uh, it weighs, I don't know, I'd say nine and eight or nine pounds or something like that. And what it ships with out of the box is just this as well as a 450 watt power supply. So you can see the power supply down here. We've already installed a uh, GeForce GTX 980 gaming card from MSI in here as well. So you can tell that with a 450 watt power supply, you should really be able to handle any discrete graphics card with you know, the exception of maybe the R9 295X2 that's out there today. Um, so you get that connectivity here. You basically just plug this in um, to, with a regular power cord to your, to your, you know, just to the wall, and you have this connection there. If you look at this side, you actually have a, a fan here for air intake. You've got a set of, uh, oops, a set of four USB 3.0 ports. You have another gigabit Ethernet port, as well as audio connections. And then over here in this corner, you have your power button that you use whenever your keyboard is docked. Up front, oops, up front on this side, we'll say, there's actually a, you can actually kind of see that red dragon logo. It looks pretty cool. Um, but there is a speaker here as well. It's not a good speaker. I wouldn't recommend using it, but it can work in a pinch. Uh, internally on this, you have, again, the 450 watt power supply. You have a PCB that you, you know, mount your graphics card to up, uh, up here. And it also has room for a two and a half inch, or I'm sorry, three and a half inch hard drive. So you can actually have, you know, a full size, you know, two terabyte, three, four, six terabyte hard drive stored in this that will show up whenever your hard or your laptop is docked. So that's kind of nice. Uh, you get the option to maybe keep all of your games on that machine so you don't have to worry about keeping them on the SSDs on the laptop when you're just kind of out and about that way. The docking process itself is pretty simple. 
you can see we've got that kind of uh, PCI Express looking connection here. And then here we have a receptacle for that. Again, it is actually a by 16 PCI Express connection. And it, uh, you set it on here. It's harder to do without uh, being in front of it. And it kind of sits on, uh, it kind of rests in some divots here. So it's kind of stable there. And then there's this actual, this mechanical switch on this side that you just push into the locked position. All right, and now once you do that, it's, it's kind of locked in place. You have to do this with the system shut off. You can't do it while it's uh, on, right? It won't work. And when you do that, you actually can't use the display internally anymore either. So then you power on the machine. You've got your displays connected to the video card uh, attached or installed rather inside the gaming dock. But you're utilizing the processor, the storage, the uh, capabilities of all the you know, devices on here. But you have the added benefit of all this connectivity as well. When you want to uninstall it, you shut down the machine and you pull this latch uh, towards you or towards the front and then you slide it forward and it comes off just like that. It has a very mechanical feel to it, which I think for some people will feel like low tech in many ways, but I find it to be a little bit more satisfying. It feels a little bit more real, like it's making a, a hard physical connection. Now, one of the benefits of this is that it is using full by 16 bandwidth. So you're not losing any performance in terms of the GPU connectivity into the system. Uh, and plus you still have room for all of your USB 3 and gigabit ethernet connectivity options as well. Now, the 4870HQ processor, which was, is kind of the detriment to this machine as a laptop on its own, is really useful for when you're doing, you know, when you're doing full performance desktop gaming, right? So it is a quad core hyper threaded part, which is much closer to the parts that you'll get in enthusiast desktop PCs. Had they chosen to use a dual core hyper threaded part, um, you know, there would be the, the idea that it was somewhat limiting to your gaming performance. As it stands now, with a GTX 980 install, or you could put a Titan X or a 290X or whatever, you can game at 25 by 14, 3440 by 14. You could even go into multi uh, display surround and Ifinity configurations. Basically, this acts as a desktop system. Once you have it docked and you are installed and running off of uh, the discrete GPU. So it all works exactly as you would expect it to work. The, the kind of main detriment is that it gets fairly loud. And even when you're using it, you know, in this mode here, the GPU, uh, or you're not using the GPU, integrated GPU, Iris Pro Graphics, you're using just the CPU, you will hear this fan spin up. And because this has to sit on your desktop, right, it doesn't sit under a shelf or in a cabinet or something like that, it's going to be a little bit more noticeable than we like. In terms of pricing and availability, this is actually shipping and available now on Amazon and Newegg and BH Photo. It sells for $18.99 today, and I think Newegg, maybe Amazon.com as well are shipping it. MSI has a deal where you get an R9 290 included for $18.99, whereas normally you just get the laptop and the gaming dock itself. So, do I think this is a product that you should uh, necessarily invest in? I'm going to say probably not yet, and, and the, the reason for me personally is that because of that 4870HQ, uh, because of the fan noise, and also because of what it does to battery life on this, you're only talking about 3.2 hours of battery life on our Wi-Fi browsing test with this machine. Compare that to something like the Dell XPS 13 that we reviewed a few weeks ago that got almost eight hours on that same battery test. So even though this is a thin and light notebook, it is not what I would consider a highly mobile device because of its limited battery life, its limited portability in that way. If you're not the type of person that cares about battery life, if you're uh, never far from a power outlet and you don't mind using uh, something that is going to require that, and maybe you know the Iris Pro Graphics is, is just enough for you to do some mainstream gaming on Dota or League of Legends or Counter-Strike Go, you know, this, this will handle that by itself fairly well, but you do know that you want a docking station like this, but you don't want to have multiple systems, this can actually work out pretty well for you. And it's not super expensive if you consider this to be a fifteen or $1,600 machine, making the gaming dock a $300 to $400 add-on without a graphics card. So uh, make sure you go to PCPro.com. We have benchmarks of the laptop itself, battery life tests as well, and then we talk more about the kind of the installation process for the gaming dock. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we compare it to some other competing options out there as well. So that's linked in the description below. And also you can go to PCPro.com to find all of that. Otherwise, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you think this is a viable platform for MSI going forward? Is this something you want to see more of?
of? Do you think this is kind of demonstrating the, the, the difficulties in, in actually building a system that does everything that everybody wants correctly and efficiently? Uh, I'm, I'm very curious to see what, uh, what the audience believes in that. So make sure you go to PCPro.com, leave your comments there and in the comments here, and uh, we'll check on them. Thanks, guys.